Hi, I wanted to do a special sort of coronavirus uh, five-minute physics uh, video. A number of people have asked me to do some videos on the pandemic, and I've told them, look, I'm not an epidemiologist, I'm not a doctor, medical doctor, and I don't want to therefore uh, pretend to have expertise. I don't. Uh, what I have talked about, in fact, on a radio show recently, is the fact that there are great uncertainties because this is all happening now, and uh, many things you hear you have to take with a grain of salt. And Ultimately, we'll understand the fatality rate and number of uh, people who've been infected, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But right now, it's ongoing. And as I've pointed out, epidemiology is a lot harder than physics in the sense that in physics, we can do experiments that, that separate the noise from the signal very efficiently. But it's very much harder when we're talking about the real world and people. But that's not what I wanted to talk about here. I wanted to give you a special physics episode that in some sense relates to the, to the pandemic um, and that is that uh, we, we are linear, we are linear beings in an exponential world. And exponentials are really hard to understand because we see things linearly. Uh, we see distance and time and we measure those things linearly. An exponential, the mathematics of an exponential is fascinating and uh, present in many ways in the, in the real world, but, um, but very hard to get an intuitive understanding of. An exponential grows faster than any power law. Uh, an exponential is a function such that the rate of change in the function grows as the function grows. And that means that that if you only begin to worry about things when, when they're large, for example, you may say there are 15 cases, as some politicians said early on, and therefore it's not important. But an exponential grows, say, with a doubling time, if it, if it's a if if it's two to the x power, um, so that it could be that after um, after uh, five days you only have thirty two cases, but after ten days you're going to have over a thousand cases, and it and the the rate of change keeps growing at a rate that grows as the absolute number of cases grow, and that means if you want to uh, control things, you have to do it early on. And by the time you notice a large number of cases, already you're guaranteed that there'll be a large number of cases. And the reason that happens is if, you know, if you have a doubling, if you just have an, uh, a, a virus that's connected so every person in principle can give it to two people, that's two people one day, four people the next day, eight people, 32, 64, 256, 512, 1,024, etc. Uh, and it just grows exponentially. Now, that means... Um, that uh, uh, it's very difficult to contain once it's very become very large. And that actually relates, the reason it's maybe not crazy to talk about this is it actually relates to a phenomenon in cosmology that I was talking about that maybe, so maybe I can show, show you how exponentials work and how this idea of containing the pandemic is and failing to do so is actually relevant to understanding our universe in a way, maybe. And that is, I pointed out we're living in a universe that's dominated by the energy of empty space. That means we have what's called a cosmological constant. That energy of empty space is constant, and that means the universe expansion is accelerating. But it actually means our expansion is accelerating in a way that it's exponential growth, that the size of our universe is already growing exponentially. Now that, we believe, happened once before, very early on in the history of the universe with something called inflation, when energy got stuck in empty space for a while, and the universe expanded exponentially. And that exponential expansion was remarkable. It happened when the universe was, we think, something like a millionth of a billionth of a billionth of a billionth of a second old. But during, that, during just that one period, very short period, whose length lasted, the, expansion, the exponential expansion lasted only a millionth of a billionth of a billionth of a billionth of a second. During that period, because of exponential growth, our observable, what is now our observable universe, grew by a factor of something in size of something like 10 to the 30th power. It expanded by a factor of a thousand million billion billion in a time period that was just an incredibly short instant, a millionth of a billionth of a billionth of a billionth of a second. That's because it was growing exponentially. So the fact that we live in a large universe now was due to that exponential period of growth at very early times. But the reason it's relevant maybe to understanding the pandemic in a way, or at least how you need to deal with the pandemic, is that the, the uh, ex 
one of the big problems was inflation, was try, trying to understand what happened as our universe left inflation. It was expanding exponentially, but eventually uh, there was what's called a phase transition, and a little region stopped expanding exponentially, and that energy stored in empty space eventually got dumped into matter and radiation and, and led to the hot big bang we see now. But the problem that led Alan Guth to, to try and understand this early on was it's very hard to leave inflation. Because, and I think I can do this with just a small piece of paper today instead of a large one. Let's say you have ex space expanding exponentially. Okay? And then, and then some small region has a seed like a like a like an ice crystal forming in water where where you stop expanding exponentially okay uh, that's what's called a phase transition now that it turns out the region of space in which that seed will will happen where you'll stop growing exponentially increases at the speed of light the size of it increases at the speed of light and you might think therefore all of space would be immediately very quickly converted to not expanding exponentially but let's say another seed was hap happened here, where 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 you're not growing at uh, exponentially, but now you, th this region of space is just growing as some power law, like the Big Bang, as I showed you, um, and uh, and it and but nevertheless the region that's not growing exponentially is also growing at the speed of light. So you might think you'd what's called percolate. You might think that these regions would eventually merge and all of space would stop expanding exponentially, but the problem is this space in between these regions is growing exponentially. And this linear growth at the speed of light can't compete with this exponential growth. And therefore, even if you have seeds spontaneously appearing all the time in small regions, the regions that are in between those seeds are growing exponentially, and this will never percolate. In fact, space will, in general, continue to expand exponentially. Now, we can understand ourselves as living in one of these regions, which is now not expanding exponentially after inflation. But if this picture is true, there are many other regions that could have, could have uh, left inflation, and in fact, we're part of a multiverse. This is the origin of the multiverse, that in fact, it's essentially extremely difficult to leave inflation because the regions between the, uh, the regions that have, have, have left inflation, those regions that are still inflating, are expanding exponentially. Now, the reason this picture is relevant is think of a pandemic where you have exponential growth in the number of cases that you see. And let's say uh, you have some region like a housing complex or some small community that, that, that stops, that, that isolates, that self-isolates. Well, you can stop the exponential growth of, of, of the virus there, but if it's only one part of a larger community, then in the rest of the community, you're getting exponential growth. Therefore, you can't reduce the rate of expansion of a pandemic by just some small group here and there self-isolating. You need basically the whole system to leave that exponential growth, and the only way to do that is for the whole system to self-isolate and then not connect to anyone else and therefore not transmit the virus. And or potentially transmit the virus. And that's why it's so important in an exponentially growing situation like a pandemic that if you're going to try and combat it that way, uh, uh, you can you, you do it by self-isolating. And, uh, and, and what that eventually does, it doesn't stop it right away, but what it does is it stops, the, it slows the exponential growth. And that's what we're hoping to do right now. So the two lessons from cosmology are we're potentially part of a multiverse because our period of leaving inflation, leaving exponential growth, didn't work for the whole universe. We're hoping that when we leave exponential growth from our pandemic by regions self-isolating, that everyone will self-isolate and try and stop that exponential expansion. That's one lesson. The other is if you wait too long, if you wait till you, the situation becomes bad, you're guaranteed that it's going to be worse because 1,024 becomes 2,056, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so the earlier you try and uh, uh, impact on, on a pandemic, the better. And we've learned in our country that, that too many people in the way of government uh, didn't buy it early on. But that's a political issue that I don't want to talk about. But maybe you'll find this contrived, but at least it maybe helps you understand that exponential growth 
is significant, and it's it's not only significant for our pandemic, which is why I'm isolating and you should isolate, but also it's relevant for our universe. We may be part of a multiverse, and our observed Big Bang could be just some small part of a space, most of which is continuing to expand exponentially, which is, for many of us, seems like the most likely possibility for the universe in which we live. Thanks. Bye-bye.